gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for whatever questions he may have for the panel. Thank you, Chairman Cole. Uh, Ranking Member Thompson, were you chairman of the January 6th committee? Yes. And what, what was the purpose of that committee? To look at the facts and circumstances that brought about uh, the actions of January 6th and make recommendations as to Congress and, and that it would not happen again. And so th it included things up to January 6th and and also including the day of January 6th. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Is it true that the Secret Service cell phone records were deleted for that day on January 6th? I'm not certain that all of them. We had difficulty with uh, getting some of them. Was your investigation hindered in part by the deletion of those Secret Service text messages? We could have had a better and more thorough um, report had we had access to all those records. When did you discover those messages were deleted? During the course of the investigation. Who, who was the, uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security at that time? January. No, when you discovered the messages were deleted. Alejandro Mayorkas. Secretary Mayorkas was the Secretary of Homeland Security when you found out those messages were deleted. Uh, yes, as, as best I can recollect. Do you, do you recollect making this statement uh, with Ms. Cheney? Uh, and I'll ask to submit this for the record. It's a July 20th, 2022 statement by Thompson and Cheney on the United States Secret Service's response to the Select Committee subpoena. Um, I won't read the whole thing, but here, you, here I believe you said, four House committees had already sought these critical records from the Department of Homeland Security before the records were apparently lost. Additionally, the procedure for preserving content prior to this purge appears to have been contrary to federal records retention requirements and may represent a possible violation of the Federal Records Act. The Select Committee is seeking additional Secret Service records as well. Every effort must be made to retrieve the lost data as well. Do you still believe there may have been a violation of the Federal Records Act? Yes. And when do you think these Secret Service records were deleted? Uh, they were deleted when President Trump was in office. Uh, we found out about them later. So um, what, <laughs> here's a statement of Anthony uh, Guglielmi, Chief of Communications for the United States Secret Service on accusations of deleted text for DHS Inspector General I asked unanimous, con unanimous consent to submit this for the record. Without objection, so and ordered. I also asked unanimous consent if I forgot to do it for the Thompson Cheney statement. Without objection, so ordered. Mm -hmm. So here, this is from the Secret Service themselves. They now I, I believe that uh, before I get into that, I believe there were four committees chaired by Democrats who asked for preservation of all communications, including electronic communications, of uh, the Secret Service on January sixth. This this is relevant because the Secret Service. Works for Homeland Security, correct? They they're in the Homeland. Yeah, they're in Homeland Security. Some people may think they're in Treasury, but the, after 9-11, they were transferred to Homeland Security. So here's what the Secret Service said about those records. It says that the OIG requested the communications on February 26th after the migration was well underway. The Secret Service notified DHS OIG of the loss of certain phones data, but confirmed to OIG that none of the texts it was seeking had been lost in the migration. I think we later found out they were lost, but what he says is on February 26th, the migration was underway. Didn't say it was complete, said it was underway. Now, Secretary Mayorkas was confirmed on February 2nd. So this would have been 24 days after that, that the Secret Service themselves 
is saying they're still in the process of migrating. Now, what the Secret Service claimed is that they switched phones and phone providers and then deleted all of the old phones. But it, it seems, according to the Secret Service, that they were still in the process of doing that while Secretary Mayorkas was in charge of Homeland Security, which is the umbrella over the Secret Service. So, uh, I forgot if I asked you, did you, do you still think it appears that there may have been a violation of the Federal Records Act? Well, the issue of that uh, with the Secret Service came up when the IG was trying to get access to the record and did not tell us that he was trying to get access to the record. We found that out later in the investigation. Who, who kept you from getting access? Did... Well, to be honest with you, uh, a number of us wrote, let four of us sign the letter uh, asking for that information. But in reality, we were not afforded that opportunity to get it. But at the time we asked for it, uh, the Trump administration was still there as president. So did, did Secretary Mayorkas hold anybody accountable for the deletion of those records and those cell phone records? I'm not aware of it. Are you still trying to get them from Secretary Mayorkas? Well, well you know, our committee has disbanded. So you're, you're not interested in that and pursuing that any further. The fact that you said, I'm going to read your words back to you, appears to be contrary to the federal records retention requirements and may represent a possible violation of the Federal Records Act. I think if, if four committees of Congress gave a preservation notice and the Secret Service deleted those uh, communications, that's obstruction of Congress. I think we should still be looking into that, regardless of when we found out about it, and frankly, regardless of who pre the president is. But it seems to me that Mayorkas hasn't done anything about this. And according to the Secret Service statement from 2022, uh, it looks like they were still in the process of deleting these cell phone records when Mayorkas was secretary. I would, I would hope that he would be as troubled about this as I am. Uh, let me ask you, let me tie this back who, was, who is responsible on January 6th? Who was responsible for the health and well-being of the incoming vice president? Of the incoming? incoming? This would be Senator Kamala Harris at the time. She was under the protection of them. Well, was, obviously, Secret Service. Correct, the Secret Service. So um, where, where was she on January 6th while all this was going on over at the Capitol? I don't know. Do you know there were pipe bombs allegedly present on January 6th? I know there were two pipe bombs, one at the Democratic uh, headquarters and one at the Republican. So you're in charge of the entire investigation of what happened on January 6th and what led up to January 6th, and you don't know that the vice president was in the D, the incoming vice president was in the DNC when that pipe bomb was sitting there? Do you, I, I, I don't, you know, we did not, our investigation was looking at the facts and circumstances. Uh, we knew that there were pipe bombs. Uh, we just, I'm sure the evidence will say she was wherever she is, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to your point. Okay, well, my point is, if this bomb had gone off just a few feet from her, this could have been the worst assassination since JFK. Um, and I looked at your January 6th report, and I don't, I mean, can you tell me what you wrote about this pipe bomb and the fact that she was almost blown up that day? The gentleman, you uh, Not right now. No, I, I'm just, it's in the report in terms of the submission. It's not in the 850-page document. 
So you guys did, your, your committee did investigate the pipe bomb or did not no, investigate we, the pipe bomb? Well, I'm trying to figure out, we're not a criminal investigation. Uh, we are, you know, we, we were an oversight body looking at the facts and circumstances. We were not a criminal body to see who, was, who laid the bomb or anything like that. Okay, I'll give you that, but here's, <laughs> it seems like a lot of a criminal indictments came out of, of your, uh, the result of your investigation. But here's my concern. So we unearthed a video, I don't know if you've seen it, when that second pipe bomb is found. And the Secret Service, it's a videotape of the DNC and uh, a person who doesn't have a uniform on, we're told it's a Capitol Hill police officer, found that bomb, walked over to uh, incoming Vice President Kamala Harris's detail, told them there was a pipe bomb. Now, I believe that to be true because I've since talked to the Capitol Police and talked to one of the people on the scene that day. He went over, they went over and told the Secret Service detail there was a pipe bomb there. On this video, about four minutes elapsed before the Secret Service responds. This is why I'm interested. I know you were very interested at one point in the deletion of these Secret Service text messages, but this is why I am interested, and I would have thought the January 6th committee would have been interested in the two most threatening weapons that were present on January 6th that day. But what happens is a police officer without a uniform on, but must have been known as a police officer to the Secret Service, tells the Secret Service, there's a bomb over here. It takes them four minutes for the Secret Service to respond. It takes them 10 minutes to evacuate Kamala Harris, who, and this bomb is maybe 15 feet from the building that she's in. And this is, this is why I wonder if you're still the least you know, bit curious about why Secretary Mayorkas has not followed up on the deletion of all these Secret Service texts. Does it, does it bother you that they deleted them? Well, it bothers me that we did not have access to all the tapes, but it also is within the purview of the OIG. They, they, and we don't have any uh, say so as as to what they do until they finish their report. To my knowledge, they've not completed that report. Well, there were four committees, as you, as you told us here, that requested the preservation of those Secret Service communications, and they specifically said including electronic communications. And then the Secret Service proceeds to migrate the phones to a different carrier and destroy the phones that were in their possession. Part of this migration, at least part of this migration, happened while Secretary Mayorkas was in charge of the, the DHS, which is what the Secret Service is part of and reports to. This is concerning to me. I don't know if I would have drafted the same articles of, uh, of impeachment that we see here today. I think if you gave 435 people the job, you'd get 435 answers. But one of the things that concerns me greatly is here we had on January 6th, what we are being told are by the FBI and the ATF, viable bombs within just feet of the, the incoming vice president, first African-American female vice president in the history of this country, is, is within feet of a bomb, a viable bomb for over an hour the Secret Service takes forever to respond to it. And here we have Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas, who was over all of this, not on that day, but I'm not as concerned about that day as I am now about the information we can't get and the information that he hasn't tried to get, as far as I can tell. Am I, uh, and I've spoken to the OIG about this. There's, there's, Apparently, it's still the, the word of the Secret Service that this stuff is deleted and it ain't never coming back because they, they didn't just delete the electronics, 
they destroyed the phones. This is concerning to me. I believe, uh, I believe you were correct when you made this joint statement with Ms. Cheney, saying that there was a possible violation of the Federal Records Act. And when there is a possible violation of the Federal Records Act, in, in response to and in contravention of a Preservation Act from Congress, which is trying to investigate this very serious event, I think it's the most serious but least investigated event of January 6th, the, fi the fact that there was a pipe bomb just feet from the vice president and the Secret Service. Uh, they didn't find it when they swept the area, apparently, and they didn't respond to it for, for minutes after they heard it was there. But I am concerned that Secretary Mayorkas is either through acts of commission or omission involved in this obstruction of Congress. You said it was a possible violation of the Federal Records Act. I agree with you. I think it is a violation of the Federal Records Act. I don't think we've, we've had such a clear-cut case, and I don't think we've had such a clear-cut case of obstruction. So I think um, we owe it to the people to get to the bottom of this. Secretary Mayorkas is no help. He's still stymieing the OIG, uh, still claiming that there's no way that you could get these, these records, these communications. And I think it's a, it's a very serious charge. Um, and I would, I would have included it, frankly, myself. We, we sit here and we ask these questions in these hearings, and they say, oh, Congressman, that's a subject of an ongoing investigation. We cannot answer your question. But the, the, when they say that to the OIG, we have another problem. These are the people that are set up to oversee what we're supposed to not be privy to, although I would argue that we should be able to get that too. And I believe that your committee and the other committees, of which there were four who asked for these records, were within their rights and obligations to, to the American people to get those Secret Service cell phone texts, but they apparently don't exist anymore. And they disappeared when? When Mayorkas was Secretary of Department of Homeland Security. I've got a real problem with that. You want to say anything before I conclude, Mr. Thompson? Well, i put it to you like that. Chairman Green has subpoena power uh, with our committee. Uh, if he wants to look into that, uh, I'll support it. Are you, are you concerned about the lackadaisical attitude of the secret? Or maybe you haven't seen the video. Have you seen the video of this discovery of the second pipe bomb? No. No. I, let, let, me, let me just say uh, a lot of what you've said here today I have not been privy to. But I am of the opinion that if the chairman wants to look into that, uh, you convince him to issue the subpoena, I'll go with him. If um, I would like to show you that video at some point. I'm surprised your committee did not find it. I mean, there were two bombs that day, and according to FBI and ATF and, and Capitol Police, they were operable, viable bombs. One of them was just feet from Kamala Harris, who was going to become the, the Vice President of the United States, and the Secret Service sat there in their patrol car. It looks to me like they finished eating their lunch before they got out to look at it. And then it was 10 minutes. This is all on video. 10 minutes before they got Kamala Harris out of there. And again, it is Secretary Mayorkas who oversaw the production of these documents, these, these texts, which were never produced. And that's a real problem for me. With that, I yield back. Thank you, gentlemen from Colorado, for recognized for the question she asked the panel. I thank the chairman. First, let me just say I'll, I'll thank the gentleman 